We hope you enjoyed your long weekend. CAF was back in action after taking a break, and we've got all the highlights coming up in just a moment. This is CAF TV. Hey, folks, I'm Alex Bastiavansky. On the show today, Mississauga United has been one of the top teams in CAF this season, and they'll join me here in the studio to discuss the secret to their success. That's coming up later on, but first, like a super group highlights, and you know, Brampton Elite is a team we've seen far too little of in the under-14 division. Due to scheduling conflicts, Elite had only played three games heading into last weekend. So they were a bit of a mystery to first place ADP. And as it turned out, Brampton is a team not to be taken lightly. Calf Game Highlights Now, brought to you by Leica Sports. Leica, your passion, our commitment. The ADP offense this year has been toward scoring 34 times in just six games but early on it's Brampton keeper Alberto Sosa saying not on my watch boys as he skies to make the beautiful save. Elite showed absolutely no fear of ADP. 28th minute William Vandervelden gets sprung. Great stop there by Nicholas Velasquez. Uh, in the second half Brampton continues to press uh, Velasquez once again comes off his line to stymie the chance and make another great stop. Apologies, we nearly missed this one. 54th minute, Velasquez misplays the ball. Elite jumps all over it, unfortunately. Number 21, not listed on the game sheet. He puts it home, one zip, Brampton Elite. But that wakes up ADP. Just a minute later, Elias Goritzes to Quinn Lenardi out front, goal. And they're all tied up at one apiece. Alberto Sosa, was the difference maker in this game for Brampton. First, he robs Cheyenne Amrani in the 62nd minute with the sprawling save right there. And then in the dying seconds, he does the same to sibling Ryan Amrani, who hits a beautiful one-timer, but there, Sosa to save the day for Brampton Elite. So it finishes as a 1-1 stalemate. ADP allows a goal for just the second time all year. Alberto Sosa, man of the match, he talked about what it's like to face that ADP juggernaut. Well, ADP is a very technical team. The way they pass the ball is beautiful. It's very hard for us to get to it. And mostly, mostly, sorry, they're outside shots because they don't always have to rely on getting into the box. So I had to deal with a lot of shots coming in from outside my box, and I thought that's something they did very well. Uh, I mean, it was a game that we haven't had for a while. We've been out for almost three, three weeks, almost a month. So we came out with high hopes. And when we came out, we really wanted the win. So we came out hard, and I think we did a good job. Well, London Elite has shown all season they should be right there in the conversation as one of the top teams in the under-14 group. They piled up some impressive wins. In addition to the fact that they're the only team to hold both Epic and ADP to a tie. In short, London is not a team to be trifled with, as Chantilly discovered on Sunday. London was coming off a huge 1-1 tie with ADP and they kept that momentum going. 15th minute calf all-star Logan Reich feeds Lucas Haneo out front and the boys in blue go up. It's 1-0 and then some stellar defending by London here. Look at Thomas Ribeiro running back and making the beautiful little steal there right in the box as well. Gently done, well done. London kept it coming. Connor Millar denied the first time. Persistence pays off, though, as he follows it up. Two zip for the kids from the Forest City. Second half, the Blues were up in arms, and this is why Caleb Roberts gets absolutely smoked in the box. No call. London coaches just a bit baffled by the non-call. No matter, though. 50th minute, Chantilly sitting back in their own end. Lucas Haneo with his... Uh, second of the contest right there. London fully in control. They're up 3-1. to one. Chantilly does its best to claw back. 53rd minute, handball in the box. Tuck those arms in, boys, as your coaches tell you. Ian Norton goes to the line, and he makes it a mere formality. And the lead gets cut to 3-1. to one. This game would have been a lot worse if it wasn't for the heroics of Chantilly keeper Harrison Farugia. First, he robs Jalen Logie right there. And then in the 71st minute, he repeats the feat against Logan Reich, who normally makes these in his sleep. So two huge stops by the Chantilly keeper. Uh, 76th minute, this wasn't nearly as bad as the one before, but it's the one that gets called as Millar gets taken down in the box. And Millar goes to the spot, takes and makes. So London, not really threatened on this day. 4-1 final. Uh, afterwards, Thomas Ribeiro stopped by with his thoughts on the game 
and what his team did right. Uh, I think we played pretty good because we were switching the ball a lot to get the opponents like tired. And um, yeah, and we just capitalized on our chances. Our coach Garincha, he likes us to play out of the back by like starting off with the center backs and then building up, trying to look for the striker to lay it off to one of the midfielders, then maybe play a long ball or just keep it. But yeah, that's like how we build up usually. Welcome back to CAF TV, and I'm joined in the studio now by two members of Mississauga United, who's been just lights out in the under-16 group so far this year in the super group. Uh, John Duick, who's the uh, academy director and their star striker. And I say star, I mean it uh, is Giordano Mancini, who I asked him how many goals he scored this year, and he'd lost count. He's been that good. So, guys, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Great season so far. Let's just start uh, start with Giordano. We'll ask you first. I mean, obviously, you guys are up near the top of the division with Epic so far. Mm -hmm. um, talk about the season. How do you think you guys have played? Um, you know, uh, as coming to the team recently, I think we've been doing really well. Uh, the chemistry, uh, the ball movement, the shooting, um, everything's just going pretty well. Yeah. For yourself, Chad? Well, actually, they've been a treat, really, to watch. <laughs> They've got uh, 18 dynamite players. Any one of them can steal the show on a particular day. It's been a great treat to watch them. Uh, speaking of stealing the show, this guy right here, a game against Chantilly, mm -hmm. which was I think about three weeks ago, made our play of the week by, uh, it was a back and forth game, fantastic, and I think it was with about, what, three minutes left? We're showing it on screen right now, of course, is the, the long ball to you where you controlled it with your chest and blasted it home. You normally clutch like that? Is this a normal thing for you? Uh, that's yes, a yes. Sure. <laughs> That's a yes, absolutely. Um, but you've been great uh, this year. Um, talk about Giordano and what he uh, brings to the team. Well, actually, he's got a great sense for a goal, and I think he's very confident out there almost all the time. He communicates well with his teammates, which is getting him the ball more and more. And he finishes a great percentage of his shots. So he's pretty clutch in the games that I've watched this so far this year. The balance on this team is something I wanted to comment on because from a goal scoring perspective, obviously you guys have been phenomenal. Uh, 22 goals in just six games, uh, but you've only allowed seven scores as well. So obviously defensive balance is just as important. To, uh, the defense is just important as the offense. There's good balance there, isn't there, for this year? For this year, you guys? Uh, yeah, we have a pretty strong defensive line as well as our goalkeeper net too, so yeah. they help a lot. Yeah, and this is a hallmark of the program, I'm assuming, is just not to pay attention to one facet, but several. Well, the boys are definitely forced and coached well to make sure they're in behind the ball. So right. they've been pretty impressive on both ends of the field. Yeah. How have you been enjoying the CAF experience so far? And I'll say this to both you guys, because it is your first year in CAF. Start with you, Jared. Down. How do you like it? Um, I've enjoyed it a lot. Uh, the competition is like high in this league, so... Um, it just helps me develop as a player. So. Right. It's it's a little more fun playing against the tougher competition, isn't yeah, it? Maybe, and I was going to say, maybe you don't score as much, but you have been anyway, so mm -hmm. you got uh, the best of all worlds there. How about for yourself having the program in your very first year in CAF? Well, actually, I've really enjoyed the actual atmosphere of the game, and that's what's really made me excited. I love being there personally, and the probably thing I loved the most about it was probably leaving the first game of the year and listening to all the boys huddled together, and all I could hear was all the kids saying, you know, I really love playing in this league. I yeah. really prefer playing in this league. Yeah. And that really touched upon me and how key it was at their age to be made felt very special right. and enjoy the game. It was really good. So aside from just the competition, what are you enjoying so much about it then? Is it just playing in the stadiums? Is it the walkout and the national anthem? Just the treatment you guys get, like you're being treated like professionals? Uh, all of it, actually. Um, it all just... Feels great um, playing in the atmosphere with all the fans. Uh, getting our parents get to pay to come watch. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the parents love that part. <laughs> um, another key player on the team I was going to mention has been uh, Dante Walks, who's been uh, great for you guys. Scored some key goals as well. Uh, talk about Dante, uh, John, and what he brings. Well, that's the beauty with this team. They've got three, four really guys who can actually put the ball away. Every guy brings his own little element to the game. 
Uh, Gio's got a particular style. Dante's got a very explosive type of style, and he's a very relentless fast forward who any day can do the complement Gio to a big, big time performance. So he's a very fast, explosive player. He'll get behind the defense. Uh, it's great that you get up two, three guys, even Mark with the team. Jay, they got four or five players that can put that ball in the net at mm -hmm. any time. Dante's explosive. He yeah. can put the ball away. And he doesn't take any you-know-what either, I've noticed. He can get pretty physical out there as well. He's a very determined boy. <laughs> very determined. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we're going to put it. Uh, what's your background then? Because this is your first year with the program. So where did you come from then? Uh, I came from uh, Milton Magic. Okay. Um, you know, I left the club because, you know, I want to get um, more... Uh, I want to be pushed more, and I feel like um, every time I'm with this team, I always have to earn my way into this spot. Right, and, and you find you're getting that so far. We were going to get into more in the second segment talking about um, what it is that makes Mississauga special in terms of the training you're getting, but just give us one great thing that you're liking about it so far that's helped you elevate your game. Um, just the way that my teammates push me. If, yeah. I, if I'm having a bad game or I'm not playing to my best, my teammates are right there pushing me. So uh, we're going to talk more about the team and uh, the training and things that Mississauga United players go through uh, when we come back from the break in just a second. More with Mississauga United on CAF TV. Stick around. Coming right up. CAF TV. I'm joined in the studio by two members of Mississauga United. We've got uh, Academy Director John Duick and uh, striker extraordinaire Giordano Mancini and uh, we've been talking about the United program. Let's do a little bit of background now on the, uh, on the United program. Um, it's been around for about three years now, three I years, believe you said. Right. Uh, so just give us some background on the program and why you got started in the first place then. Yeah, well we started about three years ago, myself and uh, Coach Randy Phillip. Uh, we're just looking to take boys in a different direction, something that had no complication of whatsoever, no hands tied, and what we felt and seen was the way to play the game. And so your background though, you played the game for years. Too he was many telling years, me an interesting story actually, former Toronto Croatia player going way back in the day. Talk about your background then. Very short while, probably played only till I was 20 there. Right. Started a business, didn't play soccer again for six years. Okay. But after that I played the provincial level until I was 40 years of age. So you were 40. Now you've been yeah. coaching for how long? The last 15 years. Um, what's it like for a United player then? If someone comes into the program and starts up with Mississauga United, I want to hear your perspective on this first, and then we'll get to yours as to what the philosophy of the program is maybe. But like an average week for you guys, take us through the training and maybe even some of the things they do with you guys in training that help your game. Um, you know, we practice three to four times a week. Um, you know, we get there, we warm up. Uh, we always joke around in the beginning, but once coach says time to go, everyone switches modes into game focus. Right. Uh, we train really hard. We'll usually do three hard days of training, and then we'll have one little light recovery session so we're not too tired for our games on the weekend. And what's a training session like? Like, what are some of the main things you guys work on in training sessions? I know it's not just kick and chase anymore in Canadian soccer. A lot of the programs are really working on more tactical skills and getting more technical. So talk about some of that stuff. Uh, we usually work on uh, ball movement, uh, you know, switching the play from one side of the field to the other, uh, and making uh, penetrating runs into feeding uh, the strikers uh, to finish the goals. Let's talk about the philosophy then and when this was started and uh, what sort of your philo philosophy was on <coughs> the way things should happen because we, as we get to talking about Canadian soccer and things that could be improved, it's a discussion that can go on and on and on. We were already discussing this before we got on air. Um, but let's talk about that because you identified needs within the Canadian soccer system about things you thought should be changed. Well, first of all... Um <laughs> the under-17 boys, the sorry, the super-16 uh, boys are coached mostly by Raf and Coach Mark, uh, who do a phenomenal job with the guys. They've got a very complete team, defensively, offensively. I mostly take care of the under-20 boys as well. Um, we like the way both teams are developed. Uh, the under-16 guys, pretty much a full package. 
even with our own team, we sort of looked at not necessarily having to take big name boys, but devel developing the guys over a one, two, three year period and looking at their strengths and weaknesses and developing them as a team. Right, and there's two teams in the program right now? Yes. Is that right? In and the under-20 team and the under-16s under under as well. That's right. Um, so this has helped your game, like you, you being in the program. Um, if you could recommend it to other players, what would you say to them then as to why to come to Mississauga? Uh, just the training sessions uh, and the league that we're playing in, uh, the training sessions, uh, our coaches push us to the max. Uh, help us get better and better each time we play. Mm. And uh, the league getting to play in a, in a nice nice field uh, in front of a big crowd, and it just it really helps a lot. John, we've got about two minutes left, so without going for a full two minutes, okay. uh, within Canadian soccer then, because you're passionate about this, um, what are some of the main things you feel that we should be focusing more on than we haven't in the past? Well, that's, that would probably take more than two minutes. That's but why I put you on the spot with less <laughs> than two minutes. But Well, first of all, as an individual, I like the way the direction that the CAF League itself is going. I like the vision through um, its leader, Phil Iannati. I like the vision of people who are directly involved with the game, who've been involved with the game like Phil. I like their vision of the business sense of it. I think that's very important. I think that's something that Canadian soccer has, has been lacking for a long time. And I think that's somewhere we can create a future for the boys playing in this country. I don't think there's enough opportunity after the age of 18 around yeah. here. And I really think that's an area that this league sort of has, it has the direct vision of doing something about it. Right. And that to me is important. Um, we're going to leave on an interesting note here. The big showdown is coming up between Epic and Mississauga, the two teams at the top of the under-16 division. They're making us wait until September 17th. Um, but it's going to be a great showdown. Have you watched many epic games? Do you know what to expect? What do you know about this team? Um, I know they're very quick uh, on their offensive and defensive line. Um, and I know we just got to watch out for their uh, key striker. Uh, they've got a few of those too, though, don't yeah. they? They score a lot of goals. You've been watching game tape on these guys? I've been watching a lot of teams play. And i got to tell you, I like the way most of the teams are playing. But obviously, yeah. these two teams are bringing something a little bit extra. And yep. I think it's... Uh, you know, it's a wonderful game to watch. It's going to be a fun game to watch, guys. Mississauga United dot, uh, so soccer, pardon, Mississauga United soccer dot com if people want to find out more. Absolutely. Thanks for being here, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay, more Cat TV coming up in just a minute. Uh, welcome back to CAF TV. On to the men's open group now. Toronto Atomic finally broke through with a win in their last game. Atomic had suffered through numerous one-goal defeats and were the last remaining team to nab a W in the men's open group. But their suffering toughened them up. And Atomic suddenly are looking like a squad that can do some damage, as BSC found out on Sunday. Atomic definitely had some momentum heading into this tilt. Early on, though, it's BSC keeper Cormac Clenny stealing the show, first on Dario Brezak from point-blank range. And then mo moments later on Ior Melnik, right there. Great goalkeeping by BSC. Nothing he could do about this one, though, as Brezak hits the streaking Michael Brody, who hits the back of the net. And Toronto Atomic looking good early on, out front, one zip. Scary moments in the second half here as two players collide on the edge of the 18-yard box. They not actually. Ajmel Safi takes the worst of it. He was motionless momentarily. Uh, had to get some medical attention, but we're happy to report he was okay. Just a tough day for BSC all around as they dropped the 1-0 decision to Atomic. So Atomic have now won two straight after dropping its first four and are looking like a whole different team. Well, going through an entire season undefeated is one of the most difficult accomplishments in sport. But Toronto Croatia has designs on running the gauntlet. With the season two-thirds gone, the Croats were one of two remaining undefeated teams in the open group. Bitter rivals Brampton City United, though, had every intention of spoiling the party on Sunday. The Brampton City were playing their first game since the passing of teammate Josh Akinbule back on July 18th before the game. Touching moment as both teams 
observe a moment of silence. Players from Epic and Supernova also joining in on the field to pay their respects. And then finally, Brampton players release balloons in honor of their fallen teammate. An emotional day. Joshua gone but never forgotten. And his teammates did him proud on this day. No doubt their minds were elsewhere, but they persevered. They get the opener as Peter Nile slides it home to break the ice and put City up one zip. Croatia strikes back, though, with an absolute stunner by Pero Manalo from 22 yards out. The one-timer, they're tied at one apiece. Second half, it looked like Croatia was going to roll. It's Manalo again. He avoids the keeper and puts it home and makes it 2-1 for the Croats. And then a Brampton defensive miscue leads to Magog Zubac collecting and he fires it home. Croatia up 3-1, fully in control, right? Now, nah, hold on. Brampton dug deep. Jonathan Singh makes a beautifully timed run and comes up with an absolutely stunning goal. Top shelf, beautiful shot. Cuts the lead to 3-2. And then in the dying second, Singh gets steamrolled in the box. I mean, no question about that one. Keeper Christian Montero takes it, gets saved, but then eventually makes it off the rebound. The goalkeeper, Montero, with the goal and the rather interesting celebration. Brampton somehow finds it. Talk about perseverance. Coach Juan Barreto talked to us about how proud he was of his team playing for the first time since the death of their teammate back on July 18th. You know what, uh, after uh, you know break, you know, it's, it's nice to see all the team coming together again and, and get a good result against uh, a very, very good uh, Croatia team. Okay, let's take a look then at the updated league standings after a bit of a break, of course, for a couple of weeks in the under-14 group. Epic and ADP tied with 16 points, followed by London Elite, who had that big win on the weekend. Uh, Bree, uh, Brampton with three points, Toronto International, and Chantilly forever yet to get a point. In the under-16s, uh, United with a slim lead over Epic, and United have played one more game. Uh, Dragon Force, Chantilly, Pace, Future with four, ADP with three, and Brampton Elite uh, yet to garner a point. And in the open group, Toronto Croatia with a slim lead on Epic. Supernova's in third with 10 points, followed by City. Uh, Atomic much improved now, two wins in their last two games. And BSC Academy with three points so far. Okay, right before we go, let's take a look at the calf countdown. Top five plays of the week. Number five, Chantilly keeper Harrison Farugia under fire all game against London, but he makes the monster stop right there on Logan Reich. Number four, Brampton's Alberto Sosa had a huge game against ADP. Here he robs Cheyenne Omrani. More to come from Alberto in just a second. Number three, Toronto Croatia's Pedro Manalo absolutely crushes the one-timer from 22 yards out that finds the back of the net. Number two, told you we'd get back to Alberto. Against ADP, he skies to make the beautiful save and preserve the 1-1 draw. And number one, Brampton, playing with fallen teammate Josh Akimbule on their minds and in their hearts. Jonathan Singh, what a move, what a shot. Gorgeous, that is our calf play of the week. And that's it for this week. Just remember though, to uh, keep up on all things with the league, calfsoccer.com is the website, at calf underscore football on Twitter and Canadian Academy of Football on Facebook. Thanks so much for tuning in, folks. We'll see you next week.